Hello everyone, it's Francis with your Book of Memories. I am so unbelievably excited to share my entire process it took to create this miniature interactive mini album right here. It is not even two inches tall and it is probably the most ridiculous project I've ever created in my entire career. And I really, really wanted to go for something crazy. <laughs> and this was the result. Of course, this design was based off of the original, which is the Mighty Mini Album. And the Mighty Mini Album is, you know, anywhere from 16 to 20 times bigger cover to cover. And I just, I had so much fun, but it was such a big challenge, as you could see. I mean, it's so much tinier. I mean, this is probably one of the most difficult things I've done. This book took me probably 15 to 20 hours to make. And so I'm gonna kind of walk you through this little tiny book and then we're gonna do a side-by-side -side size comparison of the two and then we'll jump straight into the process. I ended up having to really use very thin construction paper. So there's heavyweight construction paper and then very lightweight and that's what I had to use. If I used anything thicker, it would have been a little bit too much and the book size proportions would not have been able to close and open and, and what have you. So <laughs> here is this tiny little insert, so those little tiny photo, little stamps, well, quote unquote stamps, I, I hand doodled each little camera right there to kind of imitate a camera stamp. And that's a piece of sewing thread right there. <laughs> those little faux uh, miniature brag closures right there. It, it was an adventure. It was a complete adventure. This is a cute little waterfall flap right here. And Throughout the footage, I mean, things were falling out of my hands. My eyes were getting sore. I had to take breaks because my eyes were so zoomed in when I was creating this. And it like, honestly, it really tested my, my uh, ability to continue. <laughs> so that just kind of wraps up right there. And then on the first page, we have a cute little pocket. So this paper line, um, I actually hand watercolored myself. So it's called the Today Paper Pack. If you're interested in that scrapbook paper collection, I'll go ahead and leave that as a link below. And so right here, fussy cutting those tiny little tabs out. This was originally a four by four insert right there, as well as that one. So you can just imagine how much tinier. I really had to imagine how small an eighth of an inch would look on the little border technique there if it got shrunk down. And so fussy cutting these tiny little papers was like, oh my goodness. It just took a lot of focus. I ended up having to create my own technique of scoring thin paper and I shrunk down the Today Paper Pack to be able to print it out somewhere in the scale where it can fit in this little tiny book. <laughs> so here's a little cute little tag. Here memories are made. And this envelope is a total working pocket. And you'll see how I keep that closed later on. Friends, oh my gosh. I love it. Everything just kind of tucks back and tucks away. And I gave this an extra little squeeze there, so keep it closed. And then here we have more picture space. Now, someone told me you should put some pictures in here. And I said, well, this, this is already ridiculous. Why would I put little miniature pictures? Well, you know what? <laughs> I may actually come back and do something even more absurd later on. I'm not entirely sure. But I love the back and side cover. We've got some more of those little inserts in there. That was originally a four by five card right there. And Oh my goodness. Now, for those of you who might know me already, you probably already are familiar with the Today Paper Pack. And, you know, I teach how to make scrapbooks online. So um, the original, I'll leave, if you want to learn how to make that nice big book, I'll leave that in the description and the information on it down there as well. Everything just kind of tucks away back in there. And now we're going to do kind of a little side-by-side -side comparison. So I had to print that Today Paper Pack on copy paper. It had to be real thin for everything to kind of nestle in there together. It's funny how much coordination it actually takes to be able to hold on to tiny little things here, but here's that first layout comparison for you, and then here's another one. We're gonna flip through the book just real quick and then I'm gonna show you the whole process on how I, how I went about making this little mini book. So there's originally a magnet to keep that closed, but for that little envelope, I had to keep it closed in a different way and I used a tiny little ball of adhesive 
that kind of just hangs out right there on that flap. Oh my goodness, are you ready to get into this? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited to show you. Let's do it. So first of all, I started out with a nice thin sheet of that really awesome lightweight construction paper from Hobby Lobby. And then I just used like a little cereal box. And of course, I mean, this book is so tiny. I didn't even really need to use this whole thing. So I ended up kind of just leveling it out. And I was like, you know what? I don't need this whole piece. It's gonna, I can't really fit it in the paper trimmer. If you're not familiar with some of these tools, this is the Fiskars paper trimmer. It's my favorite go-to trimmer. If you're not familiar with albums or card making, um, I have a whole list of my favorite supplies down in the description. I'll leave a link to my favorite tools down there. And so again, this is not my traditional uh, style of crafting, but I, again, I wanted to do something crazy. So here we have these tiny little pieces. Uh, the front and back cover were anywhere from one and seven eighths by three and five eighths. And then the spine was about a half inch wide by one and seven eighth inches tall. So it's an eighth shy of two inches. And I was like, okay, what, what distance away would I, you know, have if I shrunk the book down. So I was trying to eyeball a shrunken version of three sixteenths of an inch. <laughs> so I burnished really good on the back of that. Got my Tim Holtz scissors out, started fussy cutting around it. So then of course we got to miter our little corners there. I kind of just snipped away. Of course, not all the way to the little cereal box there. I left a little space away from that corner so our corners can completely be wrapped. I made some edge contact there with the little bone folder and kind of went in with some more liquid glue to get that flap on. I like to do my long edges first. And of course, we've got to kind of twist those little corners in. I ended up forgetting one side, so I came back and did the other one in just a second. But I was doing like a little pre-folding technique, kind of fold it on itself there. And then I was like, oh, I got to come back and do that again. <laughs> and then I add a little more wet glue and then I just folded those little guys over. It was actually kind of fun to use something so small. I kind of just folded those little, you know, training that paper to fold in between the little uh, quote unquote chipboard pieces. <laughs> and I was measuring that out because I wanted to get another little piece on there. Cause I want to kind of cover those gaps and make everything kind of hidden. I noticed mm, that's not exactly the size that I wanted. So I kind of just trimmed a little bit more off and then was kind of just sizing it up. Once I had it, I got my art glitter glue back out and then really gave a generous amount. Again, this is so tiny, so I, I was treating it as if it was a big book again, just going along the edges for that cover mat piece and then that, that's, <laughs> that's so funny. I didn't want any bubbling, right? So I did a lot of tape at those stress points. But again, this is this is a mini book. It's, <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> So I, again, trained that nice, cute little paper in between those little spaces there and made sure nothing was gonna be bubbling in those areas. And then there you have it, and an infamous drop. <laughs> this happened a lot throughout the entire process. It was very funny, things were falling everywhere. So in order to kind of match up, I, I was looking to the side, you'll see the big book as a, a guide later on, but I ended up kind of making some marks on there to insinuate where I would be scoring. So I ended up mocking up my own little scoring little surface by just folding over that paper and bringing in a really tiny scoreboard, <laughs> a really tiny scoring tool. It's about like 32nd of an inch wide. And then I use my ruler as a little measuring area. And I use my ruler to kind of get a nice straight line there. And it ended up being a little bit too wide. So I kind of just went in more and folded that back. So I ended up going along the edges there and one on one side. And then in towards the spine, I put the adhesive side. So that way we have a working pocket accessible on the left. And so here's the second struggle and finally able to put that. I was trying to grab it again. <laughs> Things were just not, <laughs> I was not able to pick it up. It was so funny. Just, I mean, telling you, it was so tiny. Things were flinging away. So that's basically the concept of how I was doing that, but you'll see I didn't have any ribbon 
small enough. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to kind of get a ribbon that sort of matched the original big one. And then I ended up chopping along the edges. So I did come back. Once I kind of measured that out, I kind of used the backside as a little, you know, trying to figure out where the center was. And there's the shrunken down today paper pack right there. Wow, I ended up taking a lighter to the ribbon so it wouldn't fray. And that worked out really well. And I just, of course, held it away from the flame and just did it for just half a second. And it kind of singed everything nice and good. All the plastic fibers were staying in place, so that was awesome. So here you can see I'm resizing and resizing. I'm using my regular Tim Holtz. You really don't need any fancy tools if you want to make something ridiculous like this. <laughs> but of course, I'm a, a mini album artist over here, so I have all the legitimate tools. And I've got my you know, score tape going on because I want some dry glue because I was thinking this copy paper that I printed the, the paper pack on was so thin that I didn't really want any bubbling, especially for the front cover, so I used some dry glue there. And really any dry glue would, would work. And I burnished that on there and again, I was eyeballing what looked right. <laughs> I mean, the amount of breaks that I took in between, I was, I'm creating this little belly band on the front there using my pencil to make a mark and just going away with it. <laughs> now, when things started getting real skinny, I was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to use some liquid glue. And I ended up gluing the surface first and then sticking the dry piece on top. I started learning these techniques as I was going. <laughs> so there's the cut aparts page, totally uh, miniature right there. I wanted to test out some liquid glue on the back of this one to see, you know, would it bubble or not? And it ended up being okay. So I wanted to create tiny little strips and layering them up to kind of imitate a dimensional foam tape aspect that I used on the original. And so it kind of lifted it up and leveled it out because I ended up putting a couple layers for that belly band. So it worked out. Now here I am measuring out the spine again, going back and forth, seeing what size, you know, fits. <laughs> and tucking back my adhesive, making sure that's on there really good. And then I wanted to kind of get that nice, accurate representation of this back cover. So I trimmed off a little bit of the side and marked with my pencil again, what I thought would be a shrunken down eighth of an inch border. Uh, I was working on this for a few weeks. And I know it doesn't seem like much because it's so tiny, but it's so technical. This is probably the only one I'm ever gonna make. Here's a little comparison there of the progress so far. Now I'm gonna start struggling to put that <laughs> into the tube. Always gotta put that needle back on that art glitter glue to keep it safe. So I'm sifting through, what am I gonna do next? I, I wanna kinda complete piece by piece. So I'm gonna be working on the little inserts on the front inside cover pocket. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start fussy cutting these images out. This, this probably won't be too hard. Uh, yeah, well, I was humbled. <laughs> oh my goodness. I ended up trying to create that shape and prepare my little pieces off to the side. I was going in with my pencil to kind of see if I can sketch out a little camera and then come back with some journaling lines with my finer pen here. And this is a complete accident right here, as you can see. And also a nice shot of my dirty nails because I just got done planting, <laughs> replanting a pot of soil. And for some reason, if my nails are long, which I grew them out specifically to be able to handle this material, that's embarrassing. Gosh, I'm always like digging my hands in the dirt somewhere. So here we are, I'm actually piecing together again, seeing what's gonna work. I mean, that piece is like a 16th of an inch, maybe even less. And this is one of the inserts. As you can see, it's right off to the left right there. I'm trying to just match it best I can. And my nose had to be dug in the work surface constantly. And I was able to kind of freehand the cameras after a while because I was like, eh, I, it doesn't need to be perfect. This is just a silly little thing I'm doing anyway. So I wasn't too hard on myself here. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, these little sentiments were really funny because I wasn't able to completely cut around each individual leaf. So I kind of just did a general uh, fussy cutting 
method there and then just pieced them on. This was the tricky part, getting those little pieces to stick on there. <laughs> and probably the next day, as you can see, the sun is shining in the table here. I was gonna do the back of this insert now. Again, so I just went in with my pencil and kind of dry fit before sticking. And that's some copy paper right there that I did for the picture mats. And some of this I did freehand cut and other times I did use the Fisker's paper trimmer because I just wanted a more accurate slice. But I had to be really careful with the paper trimmer slicing the very thin lightweight card, <laughs> lightweight paper because it could easily damage the paper. So I had to move real slow with it if I was gonna use the trimmer. And sometimes it was just kind of easier to use Tim Holtz. These are my favorite scissors ever, ever. First time I've ever used them, I've never went back. Just such a comfortable hold, an accurate cut, and it's just so comfortable. And you know us crafters, if we're gonna be using some scissors, we wanna be comfy in the process and my hands are never sore after. So here I am piecing together these cute little watercolor leaves and they are tiny. I'm trying to find that just good enough angle to kind of see if that looks appropriate in matching the original. Two of a kind. <laughs> so then this was the part I was looking forward to. I could not believe how much it ended up looking like the original. I was really surprised that that banner fit across the top of that flap because I did this all by eye. What I did first, now that I'm thinking about it, I got the cover size that I wanted, then we shrunk the paper pack to kind of fit within that. That's what it was. <laughs> I'm remembering this as I'm going. I'm over here kind of off camera there, again, in the fussy cutting uh, phase here. I'm trying to do the boys on that top flap there. And then this is that first flap that I see I just moved my work surface there. I was trying to adjust myself. So zooming in so close was a little bit of a challenge too, as I have my camera on a stationary piece that, that doesn't move. It was custom welded. So it stays in place. So getting close enough so you guys can see was a little bit of a different challenge in and of itself. As you can see, I have my papers a little bit tore there because I ended up, you're gonna, you're gonna see what happens right now. I'm doing this process on the incorrect piece of the book, <laughs> if that makes sense. So that flap that's open right there to the left is actually where I should have been matting all of this. So in a second here, I'm gonna notice and I'm gonna be really sad. So I'm gonna end up taking it apart, but I just continued. I didn't notice yet. <laughs> so I just went for it. I really only stuck two eighth of an inch strips of score tape on some of these picture mats because I didn't need to do the entire perimeter of the piece because it's so lightweight. <laughs> so I just did two strips of that. Got my cute little pot on top of a little stump there. And then a nice little sentiment. I mean, that is mini. Here's a little doodle of the camera there. And then this is where I noticed I believe I noticed pretty soon because I was like, oh no, I stuck that on the base. Okay, so let's see if I can salvage this. And I was like, oh, not so bad. So then the flap actually wasn't the same size as the base. So I had to go in there and kind of trim away until it looked good enough. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna redo this entire piece. I'm just gonna deal with it. So I left it on there. Now I'm going onto the interior of that flap. And this time I knew not to make that mistake again because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna have to rip this apart. Again, just a couple more dry glue strips right there for that little mat. And then coming in with copy paper, pencil. I used my trimmer on this one because I wanted it to be nice and straight. And then once I fit it on there, I was like, okay, that's a perfect size. A couple strips, remove the backings, stick it on. But I sort of kind of wanted to fix up the edges there a little bit more of the base. Uh, cardstock. <laughs> it would be cardstock if it was big. 
I was gonna start constructing the tiny little extra picture mat there. And then it had like a couple of little friends next to it. So I, oh my gosh, cut these out. <laughs> and I noticed just how ridiculous this, I thought I almost bit off more than I can eat. <laughs> Here's a little doodle of the little camera stamp right there. This was crazy. You see that has actual brads on it. I ended up, you'll see later as I do the closure on the front, I couldn't find miniature brads, of course. So we'll see what I end up doing with that later. So right here, I'm actually measuring out how many little waterfall flaps I wanted. You'll notice that the page underneath it was a little bit messy because I ended up not getting the right size of each one. And I noticed every time I score, I have to bring that ruler back a little bit because the width of the very scoring tool took up space. So I had to make sure that I was backed up enough. So I did that regular waterfall technique right there, fold those half inch flaps back, lining them up at the bottom of each one. And I wanted it to kind of, of course, match up and be proportional. So I ended up ripping that back part off and making the waterfall flaps again, but this time it ended up a lot better. <laughs> now I'm gonna mat the back, of course, anyway, so I wasn't exactly worried about that paper. So during the process, once in a while, I was thinking, okay, am I gonna try to get that same part of the paper? How ridiculous did I really wanna go? And it was 90% accurate to the <laughs> original. This little mini strip though in between, I mean, that was just ridiculous. <laughs> Things were falling out of my hand left and right. <laughs> I wanted only the sprinkles there, so I, because that's what I did for the big book. So I ended up kind of finding that piece on the paper that only had the little tiny sprinkles on it. And as you can see, I have a little bit of an Afro sideshow going on. Hope you enjoy that. <laughs> oh my goodness. This, this is another mini little square that would actually be a two by two picture spot on the big size one. And of course he had other little happy little guys next to him. So <laughs> more of the challenge of sticking those guys on there. I think I ended up doing some journaling lines around that too, yes with a very fine line marker. So then that all folded up. Now I've got that whole entire waterfall little section opened up right there and I'm working on the interior little picture mats and I was catching up with an old friend. <laughs> so again, I went through the entire process of continuing to mark it up with my pencil, get that nice copy paper out nice and thin so everything just fits in there beautifully. And then I just continue to really kind of just go for it. I mean, it was, grab a pencil, put it down, grab a marker, put it down, grab a piece of paper, put it down over and over again. And working with these tiny pieces were just, you know, sometimes I had to rip things off. Sometimes I had to, <laughs> it was crazy. I wanted these little sections to kind of, you know, be little journaling spots on the original book. So I thought that was kind of fun. And these waterfalls are always customizable. We can put you know, pictures on the interior of the waterfall or even on top, one or the other or both. This was one of my favorite watercolor pages to do uh, the string of pearls. Just a couple more strips of little score tape. That's eighth of an inch score tape right there. It came actually in handy for this tidy book. I never thought I'd really even use it. So thank you so much, Jeanette Rickards for that. That was in my little goodie box that you gave me. And some more doodling of the camera again. Imitating what was on the other side there, I decided to kind of just handwrite moments and I was like, ooh, how many lines am I gonna put on here? <laughs> I, I got the idea across. I was actually able to handle it much easier using the dry glue, uh, which is actually score tape, my favorite brand of tape. Um, all my books still hold together till this day. So it's 
takes, I always say it takes the same amount of energy to tape it on and here it is all folded up. Oh my gosh. I think that was the most difficult part of the entire book, the, the interior waterfall pages and all those little separate strips here and there. <laughs> so right here, I actually got out that base lightweight construction paper again. And there's my mocked up little scoring surface there. I wanted a little bit of paper underneath the base piece when I was scoring because it just added a little bit of extra cushion. So you see there, I just kind of folded that in half and I went to town. So these pages are using that hybrid hinge technique that I, <laughs> that's what I like to call it, where there's a couple score marks on there at the edge of the page so it can kind of bend and fold and lie flat. So it's a page and a hinge in one, which I think is super simple and fun. And you just kind of just throw it right on your book. So I have a total of four main pages. So I cut out my first two and then I had to make these little score marks slightly different from each other so they can all lie flat and lay in there together. And I just used the thicker side of my little scoring tool there to kind of burst that tiny little flap in place. It was slipping around on me since it was liquid glue, but I could kind of adjust where it was at the last second, so that was helpful. So here I'm kind of measuring out this pocket that that goes on page one. So there's a pocket page on page one. And I did this, <laughs> I was thinking, you saw me think there, uh, I'm not gonna quite use that, it's a little bit too thick. I didn't think I, my inserts can fit in there if I was gonna use the 1 8 of an inch score tape as the closure in towards the spine there. But now it's a totally working pocket, <laughs> miniature version. <laughs> So now I'm sifting through, trying to find those same goodies that are in that little pocket. I just mounted him quickly on that nice lightweight construction paper for that particular four by six, quote unquote, miniature <laughs> sized little always together cut apart. And then I wanted a picture space on the back, just like the original. So I, again, got that copy paper out. And here comes another one of those cute little circle tabs. And I stuck that right on there. And Art Glitter Glue was a savior in this project because it was so tiny. Here's the next day. As you can see, I'm wearing a robe and the lighting's different. <laughs> I was filming this in the winter time, so it was a little bit cloudy here. I always had my book right off to the side so I had an exact example of what I was doing. And again, I was mentally shrinking it in my mind, the proportion, so it, it, so it can actually look like it just shrunk. <laughs> so I played around with sizes and once in a while I was like, oop, that might be too big or might be too small. So here I'm recutting another piece. I was happy to kind of, you know, get into that really nice letter page of all the different words and stuff. So besties goes right on there. And then that cute little potted succulent. I had so much fun cutting that out. <laughs> Here's a side by side comparison of that first layout. And here I am, as you can see, uh, it took several, I mean, my hair color changed during this process. <laughs> That's how many weeks it took me to, to complete this book. This was a little bit more of an intricate uh, fussy cutting uh, with that little succulent cluster there off to the bottom left and layering up this purple and the teal and the purple. It was getting a little bit easier as I was continuing, but <laughs> it was just so unbelievably small. Again, marking up with my pencil, oh my goodness. It, I was feeling really excited at this point because I felt like the front inside cover was the most complicated part of the book. So I was like, okay, I'm on the pages now. I'm getting closer to completing this. And I know sometimes the journey is fun, but then we wanna to get to the destination already sometimes. <laughs> and that was truly how I was feeling at this stage. I was like, 
When is this little thing gonna be put together? I couldn't wait to share this with you because of how silly it is. <laughs> Now I'm actually making that smaller, thin little extra page right there with those little two by twos. So I had to do some really finicky scoring there for that tiny little flap. And then I was able to get my miniature counterparts page out. And I used the, you know, one of those two by two little images as my guide for how big I wanted the little picture mat spots. So I was cutting out tiny little squares. And then I kind of shaped it afterward once I stuck it on. And then not only on the front, but there is a back section, but I decided to kind of just get that stuck on there first. So now again, back into the cut parts page, I was like, oh, I'm gonna need to use some more of this glue. I mean, I love, love art glitter glue. Gets in all the little tiny crevices and it just fits perfect. And it really wasn't creating too much bubbling or moisture on the thin paper. I always have a thing about using wet glue for thin design paper in our projects because, you know, we spend all the time uh, planning everything out and if it looks wrinkly or, you know, the moisture buildup on there. But this is such a tiny, silly book. I wasn't exactly worried about it. And it was almost a little bit more convenient to use the art glitter glue, uh, especially for those extraordinarily tiny pieces. But everything seemed to, to look decently good. <laughs> so I was happy with it. Onto the next page now, again, I was feeling so happy because I was like, okay, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. It's always easy to model after something that's already had the thought process done. <laughs> you know, the big book, I already got to think about it. So all I had to do was sift through the pages and kind of, and then just plug and play. I like that cute little sprinkle page there because the elements around it kind of just do it up. <laughs> Here comes this envelope structure and I was almost thinking, am I just gonna make a flat pocket? No, I'm gonna go in and have those half inch marks, those quote unquote miniature half an inch score marks on each side to kind of create a real functioning pocket. A real deal shrunk version of the original. So I was sticking true to it. <laughs> And here comes the flat part. So again, I got my little mock-up score little area there. And this is what it ended up looking like. Little pocket. So now that's all stuck on and we got a total opening here. Now I'm onto the flap. So I was measuring out, you know, the height of the flap and I know that the score mark is only gonna need to be located towards the long end because that's what's gonna be stuck onto the base flap of the envelope. And so the envelope acts as a, you know, a little interactive element. I just love it because you could stuff extra pictures in there, not in the mini version, but. <laughs> Here's one attempt and another attempt and uh, finally. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I'm matting the top of it Again, it was so easy because I already had the example right there and it was just like, okay, the biggest challenge was just fussy cutting these little pieces out. Now I love this because this was like a real struggle to get that in there because it's literally going over the miniature half an inch flaps for a total smooth entry pocket. <laughs> just like, just like the big book. And then I use the same technique here. You know, I was just angling that up to try to get that mat to fit on there, right? And, you know, erasing my pencil lines and getting that glue on there and sticking it down. So now I was like, hmm, I'm gonna mat the inside, same color, same technique, working in the reverse and sticking it too. That worked out really well, actually. I thought that was gonna be a lot harder. 
Now I'm looking for that tiny little element that goes on the front of the flap of the cute little envelope pocket. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna do that in a couple seconds here. I was thinking, okay, uh, how did I fit these in here? They didn't go in straight. Then I looked at the original and I went, oh, I never even needed to trim the tags because I had my tags on the original kind of sideways. So I got that friend's little cut apart there. Now I'm looking for that piece. The intricate little, little guy had to cut around him real tiny and stuck them on there. <laughs> Using my bone folder to keep that open for me. I'm fussy cutting out some more of these and I actually didn't pre-measure this, but I'm very pleased to know that these miniature, what should have been two by twos, were actually fitting on this envelope. I, I guess, you know, my eye exercise have, has worked out. <laughs> There's a nice little drop. <laughs> and it still had adhesive on it anyway, so I just used it. Now on to the next one. I really like this one because, again, I got to actually cut into the large words page that I designed. So it was really fun because I ended up getting out, oh, this is one of my favorite papers. I just wanna give a little close up on that. Sometimes it's hard to cut papers that are fun. <laughs> but that big words page, when I first designed the uh, paper pack, I got out a Crayola marker actually, and just did some calligraphy and I'm still a beginner at that, but you know what? I was like, it's never gonna be perfect, so I'm just gonna go for it. And now I got to cut it miniature, so that was fun. <laughs> I was trying to actually select the legitimate same pieces from the shrunken paper pack that I used for the big one. So it took me a second to locate them on the page because it was so tiny. And the cut aparts page started to uh, turn into separate pieces of paper, so I was losing it. You see how those papers separated there? Things, I'm surprised I didn't lose more. <laughs> and I only printed out one miniature pack. And there were pages left over, just like the original. So there, there's pages left over after you make the big book too. Again, if you wanted to learn to make that big book, I got the class info down in the description. Now I'm onto that next skinny little additional flap for the book for the two by two photo spots. Using that same technique where I was kind of, you know, I cut out several pieces because I wasn't really sure the size and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna roll with it. And if it's too large, I can always snip away. And it was a little too large, so I came back with Tim Holtz and gave it a little snip. Right there on the back, I just started plugging and playing because I knew already that since I trimmed it, I could just plug these in. And again, I wasn't too hard on myself because these uh, cuts I was making weren't perfectly 100% square, but <laughs> it's fine. Now I just have to adhere this little guy onto the base of the book. Again, another day. As you can see, I'm wearing a different outfit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so that square didn't turn out exactly right, so I redid it. It was just a little bit too short. And I, I noticed that when I was looking at the big one, it was a little taller, had a little bit taller energy to it. And so that, <laughs> oh my gosh. Here's the more stuff, I mean, I was almost thinking, Francis, why did you do so many little separate strips? You made the mini miniature album process more difficult on yourself, but I had no idea I was gonna do this. One day I was sitting around and I thought, you know what, why not? Now back into the Crayola calligraphy page right here, just fussy cutting out just the two of us. So that was a little bit tricky because 
man, it was just getting so tiny. So I put my glue there first where I wanted them to be. And then I was kind of moving around as I could to try to match it to the, to the big book as best I could. Here comes another little tab. I actually, on the original, I ended up sticking the tab on completely last, but for this one, I ended up putting it on then. So on the very back of this, just the two of us page, I ended up covering part of the tab on the back of this page, but that's, that's all right. <laughs> right here on that last back page, again, I started getting my little fussy cutting pages out, which were becoming basically nothing. I was trying to find what I was looking for in there. And I love the little brick planner right there. Memories, I needed to go sift through to find that as well as that cute little leaf right there. Green page was ready to go. I said, ah, what the heck? Why don't I just put some liquid glue on there? I was approaching the end. I was feeling very <laughs> uh, antsy to complete this book. Now I'm doing the construction of those double stacked pockets right here. So I'm doing that first uh, large one that gets stuck down, you know, initially before that smaller angled one. Doing all those little marks on there to kind of try to get it the way I want it to be. coming in with my little bone folder there and it looked good enough, so I stuck it on. And I kind of needed to brainstorm, okay, how far down does this look if it shrunk down? How, you know, gosh, it was a journey. I did a couple score marks on that and started to kind of figure out, all right, how's this angle gonna look? I ended up having to play around with the angle quite a few times before I got it just right. Once I had it, I was ready to go and I was smiling at this point. Both working pockets, perfect. Got my black sprinkle page out, tucked it under those shrunk half inch flaps right there. Got that mat on there. And then I was trying to find the orientation that was closely related to the big book. And so I think I found just right about where I wanted to be. And I used a trimmer for this one because I wanted it to be nice and straight. I didn't mind cutting the bottom though, because I was going to shove that in the pocket anyway. <laughs> now that last sprinkle page right there, angling it up, making sure I liked the way it looked. And once I was ready, I got my glue and I stuck it on. That was probably one of the happiest mats I did. <laughs> got the rest of my cut apart little guys, a tag, a four by five, I stretch my pocket out a little bit there so I can fit those in there. And another cute little tag. Now on to the last part. So these are the inserts that get put into the pockets. I had a long vertical one for a nice five by seven originally. Didn't like the shape of it, so I remade it. <laughs> then I modeled that one after the next because the width left and right is the same, but the other one on the bottom angled pocket, that particular insert was a square shape. So I ended up just modeling it after the one before it. So here I am again with the copy paper, getting that on there. Making another cute little tab, little circle punch tab, sticking that on the end of there, doodling the camera and piecing together this last little picture mat, photo spot for the insert. That tucked in there beautifully along with those other two little pieces. And then onto the last insert, which is located right there in that bottom pocket. Fussy cutting around that little cactus cluster. Sticking on those cute little sentiments. I think that says, yeah, that says sunshine on it. <laughs> and a little leaf, that was probably the hardest one I did was that tiny little leaf. Now on the very back of that one, I'm gonna end it with a cute little succulent and a bingo. <laughs> this was a complete 
adventure, something I never thought I would ever do. This has seriously been incredible. I added that tiny little piece of thread. I made more little tiny circles, stuck that you know, little circle over the top. I got my watercolor paintbrush out and you know, doodled up those little brads. This has been an extremely amazing time sharing my process with you. Thanks for coming along for the adventure. And if you wanna to learn to make that big one, I'll leave it down below. Much love and hugs to you, friends. See you soon. <laughs>